These days, everyone has an agenda. Feminists demand equal pay for equal work. Environmentalists want to save the earth from the ravages of industry. Social scientists want to reconstruct society on rational grounds. Natural scientists want to promote biodiversity and develop alternative energy sources. Consumer advocacy groups want to improve product safety. Moralists decry commercialization. Luddites yearn for the simple agrarian society of the past. Beneath their differences, all these groups share one passion: they despise capitalism. So, what is capitalism anyway? Capitalism is the system in which people are free to use their private property without outside interference. That's why it's also known as the free enterprise or free market system, because it allows people freedom to choose: freedom to choose their own jobs, freedom to sell their products at whatever prices they like, and freedom to choose among products for the best value. In the United States, many of us take capitalism for granted. But under a socialist government or in a tribal system, jobs are assigned by the authorities. In managed economies, prices might be set and import and export quotas might be enforced. In many socialist countries, there is no right to private property at all. Everything is owned or could be confiscated by the state for the benefit of the people. Of course, the capitalist system of the United States. Is different from the capitalist system in, say, Norway, and for that matter, America's capitalist system today is far different from what it was in 1900. A country can have private property and allow certain economic freedom, but also fence it in with heavy government regulation. Most modern critics of capitalism fear freedom. They fear the results of allowing people to decide their own economic affairs and letting the unregulated market run its course. They think regulators and bureaucrats know better than private citizens making their own voluntary arrangements. Critics of capitalism will concede: yes, in a market economy, the workers are free to choose their jobs. But they'll add: so what? Workers are at the mercy of employers. But better to be at the mercy of an employer in a free market, where you have a choice. The employer has competitors. And the worst he can do is cease giving you his money, than to be at the mercy of a state bureaucrat who makes choices for you with the force of government behind him. The political implications, not just the economic ones, of a free market versus a socialist economy are obvious. So much so these days that they are an embarrassment to enemies of the free market. Yes, a single mother with no savings may have to put up with quite a lot from a lecherous boss for her children's sake. But if it ever gets to be too much, she can always quit. In contrast, under a socialist system, the dissatisfied citizens' only recourses are to leave the country, if that's even allowed, or to start a revolution. So, which person will likely suffer more abuse: the worker under capitalism or the comrade under socialism? Are we simply to assume that powerful people in a capitalist system are evil, while powerful people in other systems are benevolent? A common objection to capitalism is that it exploits the poor to serve the interests of the rich. Historically, this is precisely backward. In the alleged good old days of medieval Europe, the vast majority of people either toiled in the fields to which they were bound, or worked at a craft heavily regulated by a guild. Meanwhile, the elite aristocracy had a virtual monopoly on luxury goods. This all changed after the rise of modern capitalism. Rather than trying to entice a few rich clients, the emerging big businessmen now catered to the newly empowered working class. After all, it's silly to build a factory unless you plan on having hundreds or thousands of customers. The vast expansion in production allowed more and more families the luxury of keeping their children out of the labor force. During this horrible transition into the capitalist era, infant mortality dropped and life expectancy rose. The average blue-collar worker under capitalism was and is fantastically wealthy compared to the kings of the feudal period. If capitalism had never existed, any honest humanitarian should have been struggling to invent it.
But when you see men struggling to evade its existence, to misrepresent its nature, and to destroy its last remnants, you may be sure that, whatever their motives, love for man is not one of them. Ayn Rand, Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal